Gumusta, Kia Ora, and Anyang Haseo. Hey, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and today I'm gonna make a rocket stove. It's raining outside today, so I'm gonna take a break from the studio build and go back to my roots, which was making rocket stoves. And I'm actually gonna use this box metal that was salvaged from some cubicles that a client of mine was throwing away. I salvaged some of the desktops and filing cabinets to make this counter, but there was also a bunch of this metal that was used to secure the cube walls. These sections of box metal started speaking to me. You may recall this square tube rocket stove I made a while ago. Even though it looks really cool, it just doesn't have enough air volume to work right. My hope is that having twice as much air volume with this square tube, that the stove's gonna work. I think these dimensions are gonna work really nicely for a more compact rocket stove. I'm gonna try and work with some of these openings, but some of them may have to be plugged. And for that, I've got some bar stock on hand. I've done a little prototyping to see how this material works. And here's a quick look at the basics of the design. I'm gonna cut a notch out of the tube and then bend it in half to get my 90 degree angle. Then I'm gonna cut another section like this to actually give me some legs on which the stove body is going to sit. Another thing I want to do is use this gap underneath, close this off, and allow it to preheat the air coming into the stove. There's a quick look. Let's get on to the build. It's going to be a lot of grinder work today, so it's eyes, ears, and nose. JW. This might make an interesting dampener. The rocket stove principle we're going to be using for this build is the one, two, three ratio, which is one for the height of the firebox, two for the length of the fire tunnel, and then three for the height of the riser. So using a four inch dimension, four, for the height of the firebox, eight for the length of the fire tunnel, and then 12 for the height of the riser. And that'll use my 20 inch blank here just about perfectly.
All right, I've got all my elements cut, and now there's the matter of the air warming tube, if you will. The thinking is that the heat from inside the firebox will radiate down through the floor of the firebox and fire tunnel and can then warm the air coming in below it. To do that, I'm gonna close off this section and then wrap this around to become a floor for the firebox, which will allow air in underneath. So that wrap around will introduce some secondary air in about here. That's the idea. Well, I had actually meant to weld the, the long part on this end because I had this opening for the air to come up. However, I did it the wrong way, so I'm at, it won't matter. I, I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut out that section here, and that'll actually help me because then I won't have to worry about plugging this hole because the bottom of the, of the stove will be covering that. So it was a mistake from what I intended to do, but it's actually gonna work out in my favor. I love when that happens. Now I'm going to heat this so I can bend it around. I need to secure this a little bit better. But I don't want to clamp it down on the feet because that'll just bend them flat. I haven't done a lot of bending metal with heat. And I assumed I could just heat that thing up and it would bend in a nice circle. So I've succeeded in breaking the welds here. <laughs> or say we're just taxed, that thicker gauge metal is just winning out over the lighter gauge metal. So I think what I'm gonna do is grind the welds off and do the bend uh, with just the, the bar stock and then put it back in. That'll also allow me to put this curve inside that space and then I won't have to worry about filling in that gap. The intuitive process here has bitten me However, I'm gonna turn it into a positive, but you know that's how I roll. Something I realized as I was doing the initial tack welds on this is that it was just a little wider than my box tube. So I'm gonna thin this down by about an eighth of an inch so it will nest inside the box instead. All right, so you can see what I'm after here. Got the secondary air is gonna be coming in here. First, it'll travel through here and get warmed by the bottom of the firebox and the fire tunnel.
Not bad for a rookie. The holes in these two pieces line up nicely so that I don't think I'm going to have to plug any of them. I'm going to go ahead and put the fire tunnel and riser piece onto the base first before I fit up the firebox. burning through. I lowered my voltage and increased my wire speed and moved the weld around a little bit. I think that helped just keep the heat down. I don't know, I'm not a pro. Any tips? I'm gonna weld this piece of bar stock onto the front to cover the holes. I'm gonna test myself and see if I can't weld this hole closed. I have not tried this before, let's see what I can do. All right. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Wasn't sure I could make that happen. I'm gonna use some scrap to cut pieces to plug the rest of these holes. All right, so I've got all the holes plugged with what I would consider mediocre welds. This has actually been some good practice for me. Uh, I've got some welding to do on the camper build coming up soon. So this was the perfect project to kind of get those skills honed as much as I can. Uh, I still have got a long way to go. I'm learning. I'm still teachable as well. So give me some good feedback in the comments. And now I'm gonna fit up the firebox. It needs to be able to sit down over that. And then of course I'm gonna open up this side so that it mates up well with the fire tunnel. I'm gonna test fit the firebox. I need to cover the lower portion of this opening. And this needs to inset for the damper to fit correctly. I just realized why these welds look so crappy. As I ran out of gas. <laughs> you can definitely tell that it wasn't right. A lot of oxidation, especially in those welds there versus the clean ones there. I think it'll work. Yeah, the tank is empty.
So I'm really pleased with how this turned out. The welds are what they are and definitely some good practice. And now I know I need a new tank of gas. So I'll be getting that before I start on the camper build. The old saying goes that a grinder and paint make you the welder that you ain't. You saw all the grinding I needed to do to get this to look respectable, but the paint is gonna take it the rest of the way. I'm gonna be using Rust-Oleum's High Heat Ultra, which resists heat up to 1200 degrees. Let me get some paint on this, I'll give that time to dry, and then I'm gonna fire it up. From a functional standpoint, this is gonna do exactly what I want it to do, assuming that we have enough air flows. Now it's starting to draw. This is spruce. <laughs> Some spruce two by fours are chopped up. That's why it's popping. Looks like there's a little bit of draw underneath. This wood might just be too chunky for this stove or I may need to chop it up smaller. I'm gonna actually try some small sticks and twigs and see if that helps with airflow. The round wood just always seems to burn better in a rocket stove. It's certainly one that's compact like this. Yeah, a little rocket sound there. Was this fun to make? Yes. Is this a viable design? I'm not sure. <laughs> my goal with this was to heat up my little teapot and I'll need to make some pot standoffs for that to work. But I'm thinking there just isn't enough air volume in this rocket stove. I do hear a little bit of rocket. It is drawing. I'm wondering if I got the proportions right. I, I did a total length for the fire tunnel, it may need to be that center section that is that eight inches versus the total length. So that could be part of the problem. Special thanks to my patrons and members for helping make these videos possible. I appreciate your support and vote of confidence this year. As always, my mission at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green by doing it yourself. A rocket stove is green because I'm using found fuel and I'm burning it efficiently. Here's wishing you a happy new year and I'll see you next Saturday.